opening the mail always pairs well with opening a beer. And tonight's beer would be Infernal Fusion Machine Black Ale from Dastardly Villain Brewing. They describe this black ale as a fusion of classic Irish dry stout and a bold North American stout with a little bit of espresso flavor from the roasted malt. Hmm. Right, here we go with the mail. First thing in says it is a keyboard cap remover. Hmm. I think I ordered one of those. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Just put that down over the keycaps on your keyboard and yoink them up. In case you want to either change the keycaps, replace them. Um, if you've got a mechanical keyboard, you can use that to get the keycaps out of the way if you want to change the actual keys themselves. Or if you simply want to clean underneath the uh, keys and get all the hairballs and schmutz and dried whatever out of there, um, that can be useful too. It seems like a fairly stout little thing. Hopefully it works. Let's just try it on this random, gunchy old Chinese keyboard I've got kicking around here. Yeah, that worked pretty well. Cool. And then you can clean underneath there and get back to it. Keyboard keycap puller remover with unloading steel cleaning tool keycap. Um, sure, I don't know what some of those keywords mean, but regardless. I got the black one. They're also available in white, uh, red, or yellow when they're not sold out. Cost me an entire dollar sixty-seven Canadian. Woohoo! There are other styles of keycap remover available as well, and there are three D printable ones in this same form factor. But I thought the one with the metal grabbers on it would be the better choice. There is this kind that's got the metal on them as well, but they're like twice what I paid for this thing, so. As always, I'll buy the cheapest thing first, and if I find I'm using it a lot, and then it breaks, maybe I'll buy a more expensive one. We're off to a good start so far. Let's see what's next. This thing says integrated circuit. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, that's not ICs. That is a bunch of colored LEDs. Various. Oh! These are not your common LEDs. These ones are rectangular LEDs. These ones are good for putting together, if you want a really tight bar graph kind of display. Uh, let's fiddle around here. Or something like that. That's how tight they'll fit together. Actually tighter than standard holes in the uh, breadboard. And yeah, if you want to make some sort of a bar graph display, they are really cool. Or you could put them together linearly to make a uh, straight line displays or arrow displays or things like that. That's very nifty, and the clear ones look like they are a cool white. Okay, so we've got blue, yellow, cool white, uh, red, and green. 100 pieces, 2 by 3 by 4 square LED, 234 red LED, light emitting diode, yellow, green, white, blue. Yeah, whatever. Um, I paid $2.23 for the lot of 100 of them, and of course I bought two of them. Um, because the shipping is a ridiculous percentage of the price, so I figured I'd combine shipping and get a couple at once. Plus, these tend to be fairly difficult to find. Um, you don't see them at that many sellers, so I figured I'd grab a couple of bags of them while I was able to find them. Other than the form factor, they are just LEDs of their respective colors, so there's 20 pieces of each of the five colors in the two kits that I bought. Right, this is going very good. Let's see if we can keep the streak going. This next thing says, I see baseboard. Okay, cut into it without cutting anything. That is not an IC baseboard. That is a bunch of potentiometers. Specifically, 500K potentiometers. And if I remember correctly, I bought these because um, when I was messing around with the 555 noisemaker, uh, what was that thing called? The Atari Punk Console circuit. Uh, most of the circuit diagrams that I saw called for a 500k pot. And of course I didn't have any, so now I do. I hate being caught out without the parts that a project wants. So I stockpile. 
10 pieces, 500k ohm panel pot, B500k 15mm rotary potentiometer linear taper. Ideally, I would have had uh, log taper as well, but I couldn't find them for this kind of a cheap price. I paid $3.42 Canadian with free shipping. But for the kind of tinkering that I'm doing, I think the linear taper ones will come in handy just as well. Nothing super special about them. They're just standard 500k pots, um, half watt power dissipation, but these are, were never intended to be high power. Again, maximum voltage 200. Yeah, whatever. They're only ever going to be used for like 12 volts and less kind of thing. So I think these shall do just fine to add to my collection of parts for when I need them. Okay, carrying on here, this thing says protective case. Oh, wow. It has huge bubble pack in it. That's pretty cool. And of course I cut through it, so it completely deflated it and made it useless. Awesome. How do I get into this? Well, I guess just that way. This camera accessories. And this is, oh, this is like a rubbery. How many layers of packaging are there on this thing? Wow. Um, this is a kind of rubbery case for my DGA, DJI Pocket, uh, DJI Pocket Go camera. Let me go grab it. Hang on. Yeah, this camera here. This is the sort of factory storage case that came with it. But when it's in operation, it's kind of hanging out here in the world. So I guess, how does this go on here? So that, hmm. That's going to be interesting to get in there. I'm going to have to really stretch that rubber. Okay. Um, or something. But anyway, that goes on there. And then I guess this... I'll just slip over the head of it to protect it when it's not in use. That seems kind of janky. You know, I guess it protects the lens and protects that from getting bashed around a little bit. Okay, and then that just goes on so there somehow. I'm going to have to struggle to get that on there. Hang on. Oh, that's not as bad as I thought. Arf. Get on there. Okay, that still works. That still goes on there. And does it... So if I take that cover off, I assume that's what that's for anyways. Does it power on? Yes, it does. Alrighty. I can still operate it yeah and it still does the thing cool oh it's handheld gimbals for Osmo pocket 2 camera silicone case two pieces with lanyard uh, I don't think it came with a lanyard but it does have a lanyard attachment so maybe I'll let that slide uh, 531 plus a buck to shipping Okay, yeah, so that is what that piece is for. It just uh, covers the lens when it's not in use. It doesn't protect the gimbal arm, though, but at least it protects the uh, protects the lens. And yeah, there it is with the lanyard that it didn't come with. Although, to be fair, the picture here doesn't show a lanyard anyway. It just says it. Hmm. And not much else to say down here except for disclaimers and stuff and some more pictures, which are basically the same pictures as up top side. And the last thing in today is this package, which appears to have actually been shipped from the U.S. Um, what does it say here? Oh, pulse oximeter. Oh, a medical device, if we can believe the customs declaration. And a note that I cut in half. Okay. But yes, it is in fact a fingertip pulse oximeter. Wow, this note is actually useful information. How to use the thing and troubleshooting issues. Cool. You must use strong, fresh batteries. Okay. Hey, save 10% with the next order. Cool. Anyway, back to this. A fingertip pulse oximeter. If you've been to a doctor's office lately or a hospital or something like this, you may have encountered something... Oh crap, it's damaged. Uh, something like this. Basically, 
you stick your finger in there and it displays your pulse and your blood oxygen percentage. And given the disease that's been floating around the last couple of years and the fact that a few people in my household caught it a while ago, I figured something like this might be a useful thing to have around. Now then, I think, oh yeah, this is just the little bezel, or the little uh, screen kind of uh, protection. It's not the actual physical screen, so that's not a big deal. I'll just pull the protector off there. Sorry, no sexy music this time. Uh, anyway, uh, this thing needs a couple of AAA batteries. I happen to have a few of kicking around here. These aren't the highest quality, but they are fresh from the dollar store. So we'll give this thing a quick check and just see how unhealthy I really am right now. Hopefully get in there. Hopefully it doesn't say that I'm dead or anything. So push, stick my finger in there, push the button. It says 96% and 65 beats per minute pulse. But you can't really see that. Oh, there we go. There, I guess you can. You just got to get the lighting right. It's a lot easier to see in real life. Oh, and it's updating live too. That's cool. Pulse oximeter finger with two AAA batteries or either alone blood oxygen saturation. I got the option with no batteries for 888 American or 1202 Canadian. The extra batteries would have cost another dollar American. Or you could buy batteries from these guys for way too much. Anyway, this shipped from New York and it was free shipping. I can't remember the last time I saw something shipping from the US to Canada for free shipping. That's just amazing. Anyway, um, it's just a cheap medical device and hopefully it will be useful. A little bit of information on how to use it. Okay. Um, de -de 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 -de. Peel off the perfective film over the screen or it will be blurry. Done and done. And there we have the contents of today's Mailbag Monday haul. Quite a variety this time. Some rectangular LEDs, the kind you don't see very often, so I stocked up. Keycap puller, useful for maintenance on uh, keyboards. Pots for stock and future projects and just to have around. This little silicone case for my, uh, for my camera, I think might be interesting, useful, um, just to keep it protected while using it. Not quite sure about this little hood for the top here, because as you can see, it doesn't really protect the motion components. But anyway, oh, uh, it'll prevent it from getting banged around. And this pulse oximeter. I think it'll be interesting and useful uh, to have around here. You know, as my wife and I get older and as diseases floating around in public cause your oxygen levels to do weird things. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'm just being a hypochondriac. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Um, questions and comments down below as usual. Thanks to my Patreon supporters and my YouTube channel members for helping keep the mailbags uh, full and rolling in. And of course, for helping keep my beer fridge full. I really appreciate that. Well, thanks to everybody for watching. Once again, I will talk to you later.